Okay, Brett Spencer, everybody. Um, and the next person on the list is... Okay, this is um, uh, another call for sign-ups. Anyone want to put their name on the list? Um, uh, anyone else have anything to read? I see some people coming in, so if you have anything to read, there's a sign-up. No? Okay, well... Okay, well, I guess... Next one's me. <laughs> Who's me? <laughs> no, I don't have this me guy. Is he Asian? Did you go on that? I'm eco friendly. Uh, huh. Okay, um, uh, this first piece I'm reading is called Downward Spiral. You can thank Dr. Perusik for this kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, get comfortable here. You might want to sit down like Mitch did. Yeah, sit down. I know, but I never sit down. down. It's comfortable. You can still be loud and sound. Okay, fine. 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 It's hard to wean off the corporate titty. America was built on industry, built on the backs of workers. Who toiled for hours behind closed doors and sweat to death just to put cars on the markets and food on their tables. Okay, I don't like this. Nowadays, factories are barren. The workers betrayed and impoverished. Many a child goes to school no longer financed by the business that made their town into a prospering city. That child is in an environment that fosters crimes and neglects learning due to budget cuts. So if I'm uncomfortable, I am uncomfortable. I stand up. Stand up. God, you know how I make on the right one. That's loud. I know it is. I'm sorry, guys. Technical difficulties, please stand by. Overseas expansion, free trade agreement, all in the name of capitalism, a free market economy. But I can safely say that Adam Smith, father of modern capitalism, for those of you who didn't know, is rolling in his grave ashamed at what greed has created from his economic vision. He did not envision the wealthy taking over the world and creating as many destitute as possible, ruining lives so they may sit high on marble pedestals as the world below them collapse. Free market doesn't mean free money for the privileged. It doesn't mean people can profit from others' pain. It doesn't mean that innocent lives are lost to the corporate machine as jobs are explore, exported to countries so their people may suffer under inhumane conditions just so Nikes can cost a few dollars less. Now, I can live with capitalism, I suppose. I've been doing it for 19 years. But this isn't what I call capitalism. This is socialism for the wealthy and anarchism for the poor. Is there a solution? Maybe not. Maybe the system can be fixed. Maybe the government can step in and lay down the law and finally recognize that the new criminals don't go by the name thug or gangster. They go by the name CEO. So why does the long arm of the law stop just short of them? Why does the government support man-made destruction of the country? are failing, is there are no factories to pay property tax to help fund education. Hospitals are overworked and understaffed as corporate officials try to sop up as much cash as possible from the elderly. Crime is on the rise, a steady increase in unemployment can drive any man or woman to criminality. The country is falling apart as money is being lost, and the people are continually raped of their well-being so that one man can have the world served to him on a silver platter. We're failing as a country because our resources are being sucked dry to feed the insatiable hunger of corporate gluttony and no one's trying to stop it. Even those who want change have not the power to put it in motion. It's crazy guys with the signs are right. The end is near. This isn't a dream. This is what I call the American nightmare. What about the birds falling out of the sky? <laughs> this poem I call a uh, temptation comes from a time in my life where I like to clear my history. 
Um, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I am baptized now. I need to stop looking at this stuff. But this is what I wrote when I was. Okay. okay. It's okay to look. I mean, you're going to do it one day, right? Come on. Okay. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been sanitized. <laughs> Now, well, you guys know me by now. Okay, it's amazing how far rationalization will go just so you can double click to unfiltered ecstasy. When you say, no, wait, I can't do that, your brain says to you, you pussy. <laughs> Both calling you fun and expressing a soul desire. It is at that point you realize, damn, I can't stop looking at porn. I don't know why porn has such an allure. It's a video of two people, sometimes three, sometimes 20. <laughs> Just having sex. Is that a big deal? Why, yes it is! Why? I don't know. All I know is that I am a voyeur. I am the... <coughs> Choking on my own spit there. I am the creepy guy who sees a nipple slip and gets giddy with excitement because I know something freaky this way comes. Sandwich between the sheets. I don't know why, but it sticks in your mind popping up at the most random moments as well as your special little friend popping you a visit. And you think to yourself, one thing. I'm taking a history test right now. Could you please not do this? Okay, now where was I? Let's see. Um, uh, and Augustus Caesar commanded his men to march right after he put his penis in quit. What the hell am I writing? <laughs> and you're erasing that because that's what you put down. Don't ask. And so, so many problems, so sex crazed, so deprived, you have a Freudian slip. Then you turn to the porn, you turn it on like a drug addict turns to methadone, just trying to get by without your fix, just to curb your appetite to save yourself for the right person, whatever they said in church you're supposed to do. Why can't the church have a singles night? I'd like that. Probably be all like 70 or something, so you know that kind of popped out of my head a long, long time ago. As for porn, there's a lot of it, a lot. And well, I'm not a big, big fan of the, you know. Okay, I'll be explicit right now. What they deem hardcore, there are just some things you shouldn't stick in some places. I'm sorry. I, I may be, bro I may be weird for saying that, but that's what I believe. And especially for household objects, people. But know this now. He has let his grandmother. All I really want is fluster him. That's all I really want. I he let his grandmother fluster him. Just want to meet that one woman. You know, marching out of the doorway with the smoke and you know the you know, flashing strobe lights coming out of the room. Just just sauntering over to the bed. She's wearing lace and you just like, oh, you want to see this? And she's unveiling a piece of art, and then. She's saying to you, I had no clue what to put in this part, okay? I would not even know what she could say. And just when it's starting to get good, lips parted, ready to party, you hear, What the fuck are you doing there? Get up! It's time for church! <laughs> and that's when Grandma knocks on the door. And why'd you hit your head? That's called. Then as she <laughs> makes her exit, you contemplate suicide because nothing is worse than getting caught watching porn. You can't live that down. <laughs> you can shoot someone in the head. You can kill people in a whole shopping mall. If you look at porn and your parents catch you, you're never living that down. It's like, hey, do you remember that one time that you were looking at that one thing? It's like, hey, she's talking to her friends at church. Oh, I saw her looking at something real nasty. The lady at Wendy's, you want to know what my grandson saw? Because, you know, it just pops up anywhere. Anywhere it wants to, and you can't live it down. Then after the whole ordeal, after you're done with your whole, you know, sexcapades in your head and all the drama that has ensued, you say to yourself one thing, damn, I really need to get a hobby. I'm not going to talk for you. That's wrong. <laughs> Been there. 
I have held up from reading this one for a long, long time. Because it is graphic, it is violent, it is awful. I cannot believe it came out of me. And I, I'm, I'm ashamed of the content, but I'm not ashamed of what it's trying to say. So I'll read it anyway. Okay, now get the news ready. I received a letter addressed to me personally from my good friend, Yolanda Gardenas, who is serving time at the Ohio Reformatory for Women in Marysville, Ohio, for first degree murder. I decided to take liberty with her words, with her permission, and wrote a poem inspired by her life experience. That's where when I got born. to visit her, I showed her the piece and she broke down in tears. She told me that I had captured what happened to her perfectly. I captured her voice. I was quite amazed myself at the piece that I decided to, you know, read to you guys tonight. And so, um, uh, if you take one thing away from this, just take this. No, 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 this is part of it. Okay. Yeah, this is, okay, fine. No. Just remember, no woman should have to deal, should have to bear with, or should have to live with an abusive relationship. So let's get to the point. This one is called No. I said no, and he didn't listen. I said no, and he didn't care. I said no, and he fucked me against my will. He felt more like a man after every stroke. He made me choke on his cock as if he were saying to me, eat this bitch, because that's all you're good for. He enjoyed every minute. He beat me, just counting the slaps, just to see if he could beat his high score. And he enjoyed making me miserable. Oh Cried myself to sleep every night. I said no, and he tied me down and beat me within an inch of my life. That is, after he was done raping me. He seemed to get off on violence, judging from the wet spot on his pants. I had to drink half a bottle of Jack just to numb the pain a bit. I sure as hell wasn't going to the hospital. Not like this. Not like this. I said no, and he whipped me. I said no, and he tried to stab me. He did once. I said no, and he threw me out of the second story window. I'm amazed I survived. I said no, but I was scared. You know that vulnerable bitch who can't let go of a man because she's either stupid, clingy, or just can't afford to be hunted down mercilessly, mercilessly and murdered. I was scared for my life. He was a true asshole, and I hated him so much. I still have nightmares about every agonizing night. I pray to God or whoever is out there that he's rotting in hell for what he did. I said no, and he ignored me. I said no, and he threatened me. He put a gun to my head and said if I ever tried to leave him, he'd shoot my ass dead. Nobody wanted a dirty hoe like me. Oh, my God. Okay, Grandma, shut your, shut your ears for this part. At gunpoint, he mouth-fucked me and made me throw up all over the rug. He beat me for making that mess. I said no, and he tried to beat me. I said no, and he tried to chase me. I said no, and after flashing a 44 Magnum from the dresser, Drawer, I said no, and with the pull of the trigger, I made him listen. Okay, um, now to lift the mood a bit, as if I haven't dragged it down enough. I'm, okay, so I'm, uh, this is a perennial favorite. It's called the Miracle Cure. I was in sixth grade, I used to watch infomercials. That was the only thing interesting I could find. Okay, ready? Here we go. Do you feel inadequate about the size of your own package? Do you find that you can't please that special someone? Have you found your lover dissatisfied with your performance? Well, try Vasoconsidex, guaranteed to give you a hard on for weeks. Also contains guarana, taurine, and cocaine for energy. And it has an X right in the name, people, so you know it's some serious stuff. Side effects may include, but are not limited to, Dry mouth, constipation, diarrhea, gonorrhea, incontinence, sterility, shortness of breath, heart attack, stroke, low gas mileage, liver cancer, eyelash cancer, low returns on your income tax, spontaneous combustion, and in some cases, death. Your inadequacies can be fixed. Don't you want to return to a normal life? Don't you want the monster boner? Don't you want your lover convulsing in fits of ecstasy, screaming to your name to the heavens above, declaring you to be a god among lovers? Then call us now at 1-800-LIE-SCAM, 1-800-543-7226. Call now, you have nothing to lose but inches to gain. I feel it's going to be 
my last performance here. Either way, yeah. next on the list, Aaron Schumer, everybody.